13, with the star of Paramount Pictures, Alan Ladd, as Dan Holliday. Box 13, Care of Star Times. I don't know how to ask you to do this for me because I don't know who you are or whether you want money to help me. I can pay a little. All I've got to help my boy. I can come to you or you can see me. I live at number 2457. My name is Mrs. Karen. Please, if you will help, I'll do anything for you. It was written in pencil, neatly, carefully, as if she wanted every word to count. And it led to, well, a kid. A scared kid. And murder. And now, back to Box 13 and Dan Holliday's newest adventure, Delinquent's Dilemma. That's a great observation, Susie. What brings it on? I was trying to figure out what she looks like. And did you? Well, I think I can virtualize her. <laughs> Visualize. Don't try the big ones until you can handle the small ones. What do you mean, Mr. Holliday? Well, you work on it a while until I get back from Mrs. Karen. Number 245 Sanders Avenue is right in the middle of a suit blackened neighborhood on what is known as the other side of the tracks. I had no trouble finding the mailbox marked Kieran, or the flat with the number four painted in white on the door. I knocked. Mrs. Kieran let me in. She was about 45, worried looking, and, well, she wasted no time. Will you help me? Maybe you'd better tell me how, before I answer that. I haven't much money, and I... Money doesn't matter, Mrs. Kieran. Just tell me what you want. You... you don't take money? No, that's right. But I... I don't understand. I'll... I'll explain later. First, let's hear what you've got to say. All right. It's about my boy, Biff. Biff? <laughs> Nickname? Yes. His real name is... Reginald. Oh. Mr... Holiday. Dan, for short. Thank you. Well, well, he's in jail. Biff is. Why? For stealing. Mrs. Kern, I'm not a detective. I never work against the law. I, I know that sounds, well, stuffy, but... That's the way it is. Biff didn't break the law. She said he was in jail. I know he didn't do it. Do what? He was arrested two days ago. Somebody broke into a store and robbed a cash box. But why was Biff arrested for it? The owner of the store thought it was Biff. I... Well, you see, Mr. Holliday, my boy, he got in bad company about a year ago. He was mixed up in something then. Oh, I see. So it looks bad for him now. But he didn't do it. When they arrested him, he said he didn't do it. Oh, does he have a lawyer? He doesn't need one. Oh? Why not? Because now he says he did it. Let me get this straight, Mrs. Kieran. At first he denied it, now he admits it. Yes. Well, maybe... Maybe Biff realizes that he... Well... I know. I know you think he knows better than to deny it. Something like that, yes. Go to see him. Talk to him. Find out for yourself. And if I decide he's guilty? You won't have to come back here. Hello, Biff. Yeah? Who are you? I, um, I'm a friend of your mother's. Ma? She's all right, ain't she? She's okay? Sure, sure. I just came from her. Oh. Who are you? Your mother asked me to help. My name's Holiday. Dan Holiday. Never heard of you. Oh, I guess not. Sit down, Biff. You a mouthpiece? Lawyer's the word you're looking for. Well, I don't want none. Hmm. Well, I'm not. Now, listen. Let me alone, will you? Oh, now, take it easy, Biff. Yeah, what's your racket, mister? If it makes any difference, I'm I'm a writer. Writer? Books and stuff? Uh-huh. I don't get it. What do you want with me? 
story of my life or something? Maybe I'd like to write something good about it. Blow out of here, will you? Biff, I told you I just came from your mother. She asked me to help you. Yeah, I guess she would. You see, she doesn't think you broke into that store. I said I did. After you said you didn't. Hey, look, I get a better rap saying I did it. It's always easier on a guy when you don't put up a squawk. That's why I said I didn't. And then I did. You know, I I think you're lying, Biff. All right, so you think I'm lying, so go ahead and think it. And get out of here. And stay away from Ma, you hear me? You just stay away from her. Oh, now, just a minute, Biff. I said get out of here and don't come back no more. Don't come back. Well, I didn't know what to think. Biff was lying or he wasn't lying. (laughs) That's a great thought. A big help. Then I called Kling and got him to find out a few more things for me, which I mightn't have been able to get without him. Yeah, I got what you want, Dan. Biff Kern. Ah, oh, that's the kid. A year ago, picked up for stealing tires. First offense, probation. Got in a couple more scrapes. Nothing serious under this. And if this is proved on him? Proved? He admitted it. Nothing to prove, Dan. Well, he denied it at first. Sure, sure. His alibi was that he'd been to a movie. Well, couldn't he prove it? No. Did he stick to it? Yeah. But all of a sudden, he admits breaking into that store. That's it. You're, uh, interested, huh? Yeah, 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 I am. Why? Right. His mother asked me to help. Oh? Uh, now look, Dan. The kids got into trouble. Sure, his mother won't believe. Most mothers won't, but... But this looks fishy. Why? Because if Biff admits this, he goes to prison. That's the general idea. But if he thought he had a chance to stay out, don't you think he'd try to fight? Maybe he's looking for a light rap. I don't believe that. You got any ideas? No, I... And I can't help. My department's homicide. Yeah, I I know. Well, thanks for the information. Don't mention it. I'll see you later. I thought about it some more, and the more it went around in my head, the more it looked phony. Biff seemed scared and almost eager to take the rap for the breaking and entry job. Why? Why do that if he knew it would mean prison? I went to see the owner of the store, and, well, he wasn't sure it was Biff. But that didn't make any difference either because the police had a admission of guilt. So I went home and let myself into my apartment. You don't need the light, chum. Close that door. There's a draft. I catch cold easy. If uh, we're going to get better acquainted, we should see each other, don't you think? I don't want to make any more friends. Well, you haven't. (laughs) Okay. Sit down. Thanks. Now, look. Cigarette? Don't light no match. Shame to your face? It'll get by. Just make sure that yours does. Oh. Am I supposed to figure that one out? You already did. Yeah, I guess I did. Uh Uh-huh. Now, look, I want you... How'd you get in here? Ain't you ever gonna let me talk? I'm just curious, that's all. Okay, I got a pass key, a skeleton key. Mm Mm-hmm. You're satisfied? Oh, sure, sure, sure. You mind if I talk now? I'd be charmed. What do we talk about? You? Mm, That's a very interesting subject. I was born of poor but wealthy parents in a small, large town. Look, I'll come uh... back in a couple of days and we'll kill each other. Oh, fine, I'll have a cake baked. What do you want? Nothing. I'm a very easy guy to please. That's a virtue, and I take it you don't have many of those. Oh, you're awful impolite, Holiday. Oh, you know me. Uh Uh-huh. Lay off the Kieran kid. So, that's the purpose of this charming visit. The other two guesses you don't need. I suppose not. Okay. Just remember, lay off the Kieran kid. And if I don't want to? Uh... Answer me a question, will you? Gladly. Is a guy's books worth more when he's dead than when he's alive? Certainly. Production stops, limited supply greater than the demand. Okay. Just don't make your heirs rich people. And you could do that, Holiday. Real easy. Mm Mm-hmm. It's something to think about, isn't it? Yeah. I'll stay right where you are. I'm going. Oh, must you? been so romantic conversation with a mysterious stranger in the dark. 
I could have brought flowers, but you'll remember that a lot longer. Okay, that did it. Now I knew Biff had a motive for admitting the robbery. But what the motive was, well, that was a different color on a different horse. I turned on the light. Uh Uh-huh. My pleasant partner in that little tete-a-tete had left a reminder. His ring had cut into my cheek and left a mark. For a couple of hours, I thought and thought. Finally, I figured out an angle. But I had to see Biff again to tie it up. So the next morning, I went back to see the kid. But just as I was rounding the corner of the corridor... Okay, kid, now just keep a stiff upper lip, you see? Biff had company. The voice of that turtle was the same as the guy who'd played tag with me the night before. And he had a ring on his finger. A big ring. I ducked back out of sight, let him pass by. Then I went to Biff. You again. Uh Uh-huh. I, um, I want to talk to you. But I don't want to talk to you, mister. Had company, didn't you? Company? Uh, No, 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 I didn't. Come on now, who was he, Biff? Mm, Pal, a friend of mine. Get out of here and mind your own business. I am. Your uh, pal gave me this. Okay, so we hung one on you. And I didn't like it. So you should learn to mind your own business, I told you. Listen, Biff. I was asking to this by your mother. She don't know what she's doing. I mean, let her alone. Biff, you're trying to be a tough guy, and it just doesn't hang right on you. So I'll grow into it. Sure. Sure, that's what I'm afraid of. That's what your mother's afraid of. Shut up and beat it. And if you come around here again, I'll holler for the guard to back you out. All right. All right, then I'll talk to your mother. No, no, don't go near her. She's all right now, but... But what? But nothing. I'm beat it. Are you going, or do I call a guard to throw you out of here? Okay, Biff. I'll go. Well, Biff was afraid for his mother. That much I could guess. And he was willing to go to prison rather than deny he'd robbed that store. But how could a thing like that tie in with a mug who'd come to see me? The robbery was cheap stuff. Not likely that a hoodlum like my visitor would be mixed up in it. Was Biff taking the rap for him? Well, that couldn't be. So I went back to Kling. Still beating your brains out, huh? Yeah, I have other people do it for me now. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. Nasty cut. Yeah. Let me look at your rogues gallery. Think you know the guy who slugged you? You might recognize him. I got a short look at him in the jail today. Okay. Uh, yeah. Look through these. See anybody you know? Mm, not yet. Uh-huh. You got it? Yeah, yeah. Who, who is this? That? Yeah, let's see. Uh, name, Gilly Sistro. Strong arm hood. Who's he working for? Freelance artist. Anybody can hire him. High priced? Not cheap. Mm, that explains it. It does? Okay, let me in on it, will you? Look, whoever's behind this didn't want to use any of his own mugs. So you hired this gilly to intimidate me. I can pick him up for you. Huh? Scare the rest of them off? So, what's next? Besides, Biff's afraid for his mother, Kling. That kid's protecting her. Why, I don't know. If you make a move to pick up gilly, that'll make Biff's mother a sure setup. Uh-huh. That makes sense. Uh, listen, do me a favor, will you? What? Just have one of your boys tell Gilly. When he lights someplace, let me know. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Now, you, you could get hurt. I was. What are you going to do? Stick my nose in where it belongs. I don't like Gilly. And I don't like what he stands for. <laughs> Now back to Delinquent's Dilemma, another Box 13 adventure with Alan Ladd as Dan Holliday. I waited and finally it came. Call from Kling telling me where I could pick up Gilly. I did and followed him. Maybe I was being followed too, but I had to take that chance. 
After all, there was nothing we could pin on Gilly, just entry and assault. But that wouldn't get to the thing that was putting Biff in a vice. Anyway, I followed Gilly, watched him go into an office building, found where he got off the elevator, waited until he left, and then... Yes? Um, I'd like to see Mr., uh... Mr., uh... Mr. who? Uh, Mr. in the inner office. What's your name? Mm, uh, Cecil Holling. Holling? Uh, yes. Just a moment. Come in, please. Oh, thank you, thank you. Your name is Holling? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir, it is. All right, what can I do for you? Mm, uh, need any brushes? Hey. Huh? Brushes, brushes. I, you see, I carry a full line. Hey, what is this? Uh, the brush off. <laughs> <clears throat> My own little joke. You crazy. Well, Mr., Mr., um, What's uh, your hmm? angle, Holling? Oh, do I need one? Who sent you here? Nobody. I found it all by myself. Just stay right there. Eddie, Mac, watch this character. Hello, Eddie. Hello, Mac. Now, talk, Mr. Holling. Okay, uh... Oh, this is a gag. Is it? Yeah, I guess I'm in the wrong office. I was supposed to pull a rib on somebody, and I... Well, I guess I got in the wrong office. Well, uh... uh sorry to bother you. Uh, just a minute. Uh, yeah? Who sent you here? Nobody. I told you, this is a gag. I... I guess it backfired. You must have tried the gag too often. Somebody pasted you. Uh, oh, no, 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 no. Beat it. Uh, well, thanks. Thanks a lot. Whew. I wondered if I talked myself out of that one. I didn't because when I got downstairs to my car, I noticed a man following me. But I'd found out something. Gilly was working for the character in that office. And who was he? It took me two hours to shake the shadow, then I got back to Kling and told him. You crazy fool. You, 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 you dope. But I found it, didn't I? Sure, sure, you found it. Listen, they still don't know who I was. How do you know that? You wouldn't have let me out of that office, Kling. You sure you ditched that shadow? Yeah, I'm sure. But if Gilly gets back, he'll find out, and he knows you. Before that happens, what's the lineup? Uh, the man you saw is Pete Vossen. Rackets here, gangster. Has he got a record? None that we could pin on him. He's smart, Dan. Little guys take the rap for him. He pays off when they get out. And what's his angle in all this? How's he tied up with Biff Kieran? The kid certainly isn't a member of his gang. No, at least I don't think so. There's got to be an angle. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Huh? What have you got? Listen, it was a big fur warehouse robbery. Yeah. It looked like one of Vosland's jobs. But there's nothing to tie him in. And there was a watchman killed. Uh, when was that robbery murder? The night of the 16th. What time? About 11.30. The 16th. That's the night of the store robbery. The one Biff's admitting to. Yeah. Sure. Suppose the kid was passing on his way home from that movie. And saw the whole thing. But he's afraid to talk. Because they'll threaten his mother if he does. The dirty heels. Listen, I'll send no. out a... Sp no, wait. Do that and you put Biff's mother on the spot. Get Biff here instead. <laughs> I didn't dare go to Biff because, well, I might be followed. But Kling sent for him and in Kling's office. I don't know nothing. Let me go back. Now, Biff, your testimony is the only thing that'll give us a break. I robbed that store that night. Now, let me go back. Biff, listen to me. I ain't gonna listen to nobody. What are you trying to do? I... I told you I robbed the place. What if we'd tell you the police have arrested the real robber? <laughs> that won't work. I know you haven't because I would have been let out. Biff, we'll protect your mother. And you. There ain't nothing to protect. Kling, yeah. come here with you. Let me talk to him alone, please. Okay, Dan. Go ahead. I hope the day comes soon when kids will realize that the police aren't their enemies, but their friends. Ain't gonna do any good, mister. It's got to, Biff. Now listen, don't say anything until I've finished, will you? Good. 
Now, you're protecting your mother, but you're also protecting something else. Huh? Mm Mm-hmm. A gang of vicious men. You're protecting them from the law. You're protecting murders, Biff. You're giving them the chance to go out and do the same thing all over again. Don't you see that? I ain't going to say nothing. All I want to do is be let alone. I I want to go back to the jail. Now, let me go. Oh, please, Biff. You're... You're about 16, and you've got a whole life ahead of you. But if you go to prison to protect crooks, what will you have? A record. Oh, sure, they'll say you didn't talk, you didn't squeal. They'll make a great guy out of you. But what'll it make of the men you're protecting? A bunch of arrogant, cocky parasites who got away with this? You shut up! You shut up and let me alone! I ain't gonna say nothing! I ain't! Uh, Cling. Playing. Yeah. I'm finished. Okay. Sergeant, take the kid back. Well? No. Oh, he's our only chance to put Vosden and his gang where they can grow a nice coat of mold. Yeah, I know. But he's too scared. Yeah, he won't talk, Clean. He wouldn't talk if it killed him to keep quiet. We've got the whole thing in our laps. We've got Vaslin on a murder rap if that kid talks. I know. I... What's the matter? Listen, I, I hate to say this, but we've got to double-cross Biff. What have you got in mind, Dan? Now, listen. Don't let anybody in to see him keep all the visitors away. Why? Because he's going to talk. Are you crazy? Listen, I've got friends at the Star Times. They're going to break a story. They'll smoke Vaslin out in the open where you can smash him. You mean print a story about the kid talking? Yeah, that's it. But his mother... We won't break the story until I'm there with her. Listen, you crazy fool. Those guys don't kid. Once they say they're going to do a thing, they'll do it. You let that story hit the street and they'll go through with it if it takes ten years. I know, I know. But we know Biff won't talk. So keep visitors away from him. Vosn will try to get to his mother, don't you see? That's the only way he can really keep Biff from talking. Get his mother and hold her until the kid decides to keep quiet. But... No buts. We'll make the story look as though sensational developments are expected in the fur warehouse murder. Just enough to make Vazen think the kid might talk. I went to the Star Times and fixed up the story by promising the editor that the whole thing would be his front page scoop. And on the level. I waited until the proofs were run. The story was just what we wanted. Only a hint that developments were expected. Then I drove to the neighborhood where Biff and his mother lived. There were no police around. It had to look legitimate. Then I went up to Mrs. Kern. My boy. Poor Biff. You'll be all right. Story's on the street now, Mrs. Kern. And we should be getting company. Oh, I'm scared. Not for me, but for Biff. He'll be all right. But they can't get to him, and when this is all over, they won't be able to. Well, what if... What if something happens? It won't. Now, turn out the light quick. Get into bed. Pretend to be asleep. I can't. Shh, be quiet. Lie there. Pretend to be asleep now. You, wake up. Come on, wake up. What do you want? Never mind. Get up, get dressed. Come on. Who are you? I said never mind, get dressed. My my clothes are in the other room. Get them. Turn on the light. You don't need light. Go ahead, get your clothes. Yes, yes. And don't close the door between the rooms. And stay in the light from outside and step on it. Still standing in the draft, Gilly? Oh, oh. Nice meeting you again in the dark. <laughs> Try it again, Gilly. Oh, no. Get it, get it. All right, all right, don't shoot, don't shoot. You all right, Dan? Sure, as long as I had his gun hand. He was a little handicapped. Turn on the light, will you, please? All right. Hey, Sergeant. Let the kid come in. Bip! Oh, Mom. baby. Mommy, you all right? Are you? Yes, baby, I'm oh. all right. 
Oh, Mom, no, please don't call me baby. Please. I was so worried. Oh, Mom, it's so good to see you. Cling. I know you don't. Cling. What? Yeah, what's up? Are you all right? Well, me? Yeah. Sure. Sure, but why? You're, you're smiling. Hey, you're smiling. returned a murder indictment against Pete Boslin and ten others of his gang today. Evidence presented by the district attorney is sure to result in conviction of the notorious racketeer Well, and... that does it, Susie. Gee, how did it feel to be alone in the dark with that awful man, Mr. <clears throat> Holliday? I didn't have time to think about it, Susie. How would you have felt? Well, I... Was he cute, Mr. Holliday? Oh, good night, Susie. <laughs> Next week, same time, Alan Ladd stars as Dan Holliday in Box 13. Box 13 is directed by Richard Sandville, with an original story by Russell Hughes, and original music composed and conducted by Rudy Schrager. The part of Susie is played by Sylvia Picker, and that of Lieutenant Kling by Edmund MacDonald. Production is supervised by Vern Carstensen. This is a Mayfair production from Hollywood. Hollywood.